Hi everyone, this video is going to be about how to get started with a little 0.96 inch screen, uh, diagonal that is. Anyway, so to start with, this is a tiny thing, it's 128 pixels by 64 pixels, 128 length and 64 height, and it's tiny. Look, I can put my finger across it. Um, so it's a tiny thing, but tiny screens can sometimes be useful. And the reason being is, if you've got chips that don't have a great deal of memory, you can still use them. Because, of course, the way screens work is that you have a library, which contains the fonts and, and graphics and whatever code to get that to work. But also, if you think about it, there's 128 pixels by 64 pixels, and if you multiply one by the other, you get the total amount of pixels in the screen. And now the data to fill those has got to be stored somewhere. So for chips which don't have a great deal of memory, like this one, uh, this is perfect. It means we can actually use the screen. So anyway, um, so a little bit more about this. Let's have a quick look at it. On the back of this thing here, it says I2C, R1, R4, R6, R7, R8, and then it says 4 SPI, R3, R4. But when I first looked at that, I thought, what the hell is that? But I know what it is now. And what it is is, you see these tiny little resistors here? R4, R2, R3, R1. What it means is, if these are shorted, or near shorted, because technically they've got a resistance, um, then it indicates the model, or the type. And my one here, you can see that R4 and R3 are shorted together, the contacts are shorted together. And that indicates that this is a 4 SPI model. So that's the first thing you'll need to know. So it's SPI, it's not I squared C or I2C as some of you call it. It's SPI, which is Serial Peripheral Interface. And that's okay because uh, some people prefer SPI anyway. Um, so anyway, that's the screen. Now I'm going to show you how to use it on this. And this is an Arduino Nano. And if you look at all the tutorials online and stuff, there are not many tutorials for the Nano at all. They seem to be more focused towards the Uno, uh, the Leonardo, and a couple of other ones. But I don't actually have a, an Arduino Leonardo, or whatever it's called. Um, and I prefer the Nano and the uh, Pro Mini. So anyway, let's get started. So of course, the first thing we're going to need to do is to wire this thing up. And you can see here it's got certain labels on it. It says ground, VCC, D0, D1, RAS, DC, and CS. So what are they to start with? Ground is obviously ground. VCC is plus an amount of voltage, usually 3.3 or 5 volts. Um, in this case, we're going to use 3.3 volts. Now, I think this actually is 5 volt tolerant, but let's not push it. Uh, D0 and D1, they are data control um, pins to give this data. I won't go any more into that. Reset, I assume, although I'm not 100% sure, I think that may have been mislabeled, but I'm not 100%. I think uh, the label should be something else. DC means data command, and CS means chip select. Anyway, so let's push this into the breadboard, and let's start wiring it up. I'll just zoom in a bit there. Now, it's took me quite a while to uh, to work out how to get this thing to work with the Nano, because like I said, they usually uh, the tutorials are usually for other um, other devices or other modules or whatever you want to call them. So I've written this um, to help us out here. So ground to ground, VCC to 3.3 volts, D0 to serial clock, D1 to Mosey, reset to D8 to command to D9 and chip select to D10. D8, D9 and D10 I think you could probably change but uh, I've not tested it, I've just tested it this way and I got it to work this way. So let's get started. Um, I'll zoom in again. We'll start with ground and ground goes to ground of course. VCC goes to 3.3 volts uh, what do we have next? We have D0, which goes to uh, serial clock, so D0, D0 goes to serial clock, which is pin 13. 
and the Nano. Next we have D1 and D1 goes to Mosey and Mosey is pin 11 I think. Yeah, pin 11. The reset pin, uh, which probably isn't actually a reset pin at all but it's been labelled that way. Reset I'm going to put to D8. D8, there we go. Um, in fact I'll change that, I'll change that to a yellow wire. D8. Um, DC goes to D9. DC to D9. And CS, which is chip select. DC is data command, by the way. And chip select will go to pin 10. So that's all the wiring done, and now it's time to go over to my PC. Okay, so we need to install the library. So go to tools, sorry not tools actually, go to uh, sketch, then include library, and then go to manage libraries. And the library we need to look for is called SSD1306. SSD1306. And you can see this one here that's um, by Adafruit. Um, this is the one you need to install. Now, there is something that I need to mention here, actually. Um, this company, Adafruit, I've spent a long time uh, creating all these libraries, and I haven't actually bought my hardware from the company. And if you do buy hardware from the company, they use the money that they get from that in order to reinvest it into the community and to write uh, new libraries. So by buying their stuff you're actually supporting the software that they write uh, for us so um, yeah I suppose it's kind of ethical to buy one or two items from them uh, every now and then um, but you know of course it's up to you so install the library then when you've installed the library go to file and then examples and then go down here to SSD1306 for me, I've got the 128 by 64 SPI version, so I'm going to click there. So now, um, you can see the code, and then it says here, oh, actually it says there. Adafruit invests time and resources providing this open source code. Please support Adafruit and open source hardware by purchasing products from Adafruit. And to be fair, I, I, I understand and I agree with them. Um, but anyway, we've, we've got this code, and essentially what this does is they've written the driver for us, and we just modify this. And this is some, um, I don't know, what would you call it, boilerplate code, just to put on some um, test uh, graphics onto the little display. Anyway, we're going to need to actually change some of these pins, because I, I can't really work out why they've done this, but those pins are not for the Nano. I mean... I'm not sure if they're even for the UNO, I don't know what they're for, but regardless we need to change them. So we need to change them to, well, Mosey on the Nano is 11, Clock on the Nano is 13, uh, now Data Command, I'm, I'm not, I won't explain that, but that's pin 9, Chip Select, we will use pin 10, and Reset, again I'm, I'm not 100%, but we'll use pin 8. And there's another thing you need to do down here somewhere. I think this line will come up with an error. But anyway, let's plug the Nano in now. And I'll plug the Nano in and I'll upload the sketch to the Nano. So the Nano is plugged in. And I'll attempt to upload the code. Now, like I said, I think this is going to come up with an error. And I think it might be here, but we'll see. So, compiling sketch, and what I hope is that when this code is actually uploaded, we should get some uh, test graphics drawn onto the, the display, um, providing it's been wired correctly, and providing the library is working, and of course, um, providing the pins are correct that we've just done up there. And as I expected, this line is... Um, is kicking off. Now, I don't know what that is, um, 
but I've practiced this before so if you comment it out it works so just um, re-upload so comment that line out and then re-upload so while that's uploading I think we'll take a very quick look at what's going on here you can see that it's just demonstrating the um, the classes or methods that the people have written in the driver so you've got this uh, test draw round rectangle, uh, test fill a rounded rectangle, test draw triangle, test fill triangle, draw character, test the scroll text. So they've done a pretty good job here. So obviously what you do is in your project you just you just use the appropriate bits. You delete a lot of this and you just use the bits which uh, are necessary for you. Okay so I'll just press the reset button on this now. And it says Adafruit, and then to do all, the, all these graphics tests. So it'll just cycle through the different things it can do. So that's rectangle, I suppose that's fill rectangle. I uh, don't know what that is. Fill circle, and whatever. So it's doing its things in a minute. It'll show text, I would imagine. Let's just wait for it to show text. Yeah, there we go, text. So that's how to wire up and that's how to code um, with thanks to Adafruit for creating the library that's how to use this little 0 0.96 inch OLED uh, screen and with the Nano so thank you for watching and if you enjoyed the video click like thank you bye